Up it up. We're up. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, where are we and what are we doing? Got a ton of work done yesterday. Shop was closed. I kept the shutter closed. And I had a real carving day, just like back in the old days. And I used to live in Ome. Let's recap a little bit. What have we got here? Zoom out a bit for a minute. Here's the block you've seen over the past few days. When did we start? Today's Wednesday. I started when? Saturday morning? No, Sunday. Sunday morning, I think. Here's the key block. It's finished as of yesterday. Yesterday morning, I finished it. And I did the color transfers. I did the color separations already. Uh, Cameron filmed some of this at the point where we finished the uh, key block. I posted on my blog about it. If you've seen the Mokohankan Conversations blog yesterday, we posted some shots of this on a, just as it was finished. Beautiful block. And then while I did the color transfer sheets, Cameron took a bit of quick video. I think he might be doing it just in a little patch video on Facebook here or something. I'm not quite sure. We splashed the black on. I took some transfer sheets. There are going to be six, six color faces plus this key block, I think. And we took the transfer sheets yesterday, and one of them already got pasted down yesterday about noon, and I've been busy on it. Um, what, what is this? What are we going to see? Let's try and find the... Uh, let's try and find the image here. Just a minute. Okay, here's the original. You can see what's going to happen. It's going to be a bunch of very vague, very vague, very vague, blurry kind of things. Some of this is going to fit within the lines of the key block. Like you can see, for example, this tone, it's going to come inside the lines of the shrine here. There'll be an inside and an outside. And this is the sort of second key block. If you look on the image on the left, you'll see some red floral, you know, the, the cherry tree, the outline of the cherry trees. And that's what this block is going to be about. So it's a base red tone at the bottom of the, of the print, and it comes up to cover the, uh, to, sh to shape the cherry blossoms. And I can't carve the next blocks until this one is finished, because if you look on the image at the left, you'll see a whole bunch of places where the red curly, 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 curly outlines, where they define color zones. In the middle of the tree at the left, there's some lighter areas, and you can see the shape of them is partly defined by these red curly lines. So I can't carve that next block until this one is finished. So this is going to be sort of a second key block. So once this is done, I'll transfer it to another sheet and we'll get going. <coughs> anyway, let's get back to it. Oops, too far. So this is not going to be horribly interesting, it's just tape going round and round and round and round and round and round these little cherry patterns, but uh, whatever, that's the job today. What else is happening? Today is a Wednesday, Cameron should be here on normal schedule. Today it's a Wednesday, so Audrey-san and Shiba-san are here. They've only got one party schedule today, they can take care of that, so I may get another carving day here today. We're still very light on visitors because it's the middle of cold February, so I may actually have a chance to do another full day of carving here. This block set has to be finished, uh, as in has to be finished, before I leave for Canada next Tuesday. So I got a bunch of other stuff I got to do first. There's got to be a sizing batch, maybe two more sizing batches before I leave. As far as show and tell goes, we've got, what have we got? Uh, a bunch of packages arrived yesterday, just big boxes of prints. They're for the shop. There's nothing to sit here on the bench here and show. But I did get one small package yesterday that might be interesting for you. We'll see. When Cameron gets it, remind me about it, and we'll see if there's time to talk about it or whatever.
this block, the particular face I'm carving out. It's another one of those ones we're going to see all year long. The ones that our printers really, really, really don't like to see. You know, normally, the key block you saw a minute ago has just fine lines. So when the printers print it, they choose a delicate barren. They've got their paper softened in the right way, and they print with a fairly light printing pressure. Then usually in a typical print, in addition to the key block, there's going to be color blocks. And the color blocks, for the most part, don't have delicate lines. And you print those with a stronger barren to get smooth, deep color, and you use more pressure. So it's fine line blocks and color blocks, for the most part, typical UQA prints. This year, because of the way we're doing this thing, we're trying to minimize the number of blocks. It's more of a shin-hung approach. It's not just coloring inside the lines. And as you saw in the New Year print, we had a whole bunch of blocks that are a combination. We've used the same block, and that's what this one is. We've used the same block for the flat tone that's going to be at the bottom of the print, and the same block does the lines up in the top part of the print. So for the printers, it's kind of a real, not a nightmare, it's the wrong word to use, but it's a tough thing to do. You've got to print the block strongly enough to get the color rich and smooth at the bottom of this, and yet without destroying fine lines. And it's the only way to do it, to keep the cost of the prints reasonable. These prints are $45 each. If, if it was done with all this stuff on separate blocks, the block count would be literally double, and this print would be well over $100. So the printers, in that sense, they're sort of paying the price for getting the prints reasonably priced out into the market. Now I've got a mix of stuff here. What you're going to see me carve some of these lines. This one here is from Jed's drawing. It's cherry blossoms inside the cloud. These lines here, I don't think you can tell. Them. These are left over from the key block. These are branches. There's a branch here and a branch here. So I'm not going to carve the branches, but I have to carve the colors. It's a mix here. So don't panic when you see me cut off this line, the one right here. It's a branch line which will be printed from the key block. This one too, there's a cherry color and then the branch. We're going to go halfway through the branch. The blade snap count, is that a thing now? <laughs> if you make it too tough for me, then we'll turn the camera off. Actually, next week, you know, when we get the microscope up, it's going to be even worse. You want to talk about seeing the sausage being made. Wait till you get the close-up views, you know.
We're just waiting for a video adapter or a lens adapter so that I can put the Canon camera onto the microscope mount. I made a mistake a couple of weeks ago. I ordered it. I went to Amazon and I looked at different places to order these things. I picked one that I thought was okay to order this uh, camera adapter. And it hasn't showed up, so I go back to the website. And it turns out that it's going to be shipping from some village in the mountains of China somewhere. So that was a mistake. Amazon Marketplace. It's not like we don't have anything else to do. Okay, for these things here, we've got these U's. Curly up, curly up, curly up, curly up. I go around each one, and what I can do to save a bit of time here, so I can come across the top of the peaks. There's three, four peaks there. Up to another peak here. Just first chop off the unneeded wood up to the peaks. And now I've got one, two, three, four U's to carve out. And we can do it. Number one, number two, partly into number three. It's a bit too deep to really want to cut into number four and come out the same way. Paper's out, yes, thank you very much. Paper's out, actually, I had to make two trips for it. Two trips for it. I, I, this morning when I had my shower up there, I checked the refrigerator door, and it said the only printer that's going to be here today was Lei Chan. So I took out her paper, no problem. Followed my instructions, did a good job. Came back down here to the shop, made some coffee, got some breakfast ready, opened my email, there's a note from Suga-san saying she didn't put her green or yellow dot on the fridge, but please take the fridge out, take the paper out anyway, because she'll be coming. So I did an extra exercise today, ran up to the third floor again, and uh, took her paper out. So yes, all the paper is out. Thank you for the reminder.
awkward green in this part of the block. This is it for me today, and I just curly, curly, curlies, more curlies, isolated curly, curly, curlies, bit by bit by bit. It's not terribly interesting work, but it's part of the process. You know. doing this yesterday you know, because the shop was closed there's nobody around I took the opportunities I we have a, a Bluetooth speaker upstairs in the printer's room the printers sometimes put a little bit of light music on it not always because there's four of them there and they can never sort of feel comfortable playing music when there's other people in the room you know who chooses what to play stuff like that but we do have a setup there's a Bluetooth speaker up there and now and then they fire up their phone or something and play some music to it so I stole it yesterday. I brought it down here yesterday morning. And in the empty shop, it's kind of cool. The shop, you can hear the echo as I'm speaking. The walls are sort of a bit echoey. So I put the speaker up on the, on the counter there and uh, went through our intranet, our, our, you know, the, to the computer upstairs, my old computer, which has my own music library on it. And I streamed from my own little server a bunch of stuff that I hadn't heard in years. And one cranked it up, and the camera came in, so like, what are you listening to? <laughs> he doesn't know I used to be a bass player in a rock and roll band. Bad, 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 bad band. Cameron, too, he's got a musical secret. He's got an alto saxophone, actually, it turns out. I guess he was in a, a, a school band situation or jazz band situation when he was in school, so he's still got his saxophone somewhere, I think. sacks over in Ome, left over from those days. I haven't touched it in, it must be 40 years, nearly 40 years now. I've got two tenors. I've got an old Mark VI tenor in the closet over in Ome. It's a tragedy to leave it sitting there not being played, you know. I don't want to give up and sell it. That, you have to face them that you're never going to play it ever again. And I'm sort of not ready for that psychologically, but whatever.
to the show. Look at this, not much conversation here. Good, good, good. Just quiet carving to show. <laughs> Oh, is it raining? Ah, oh, it's raining out there. The car went by with a wet sound. It's raining. So it'll be another really, really quiet day in the shop then. February plus rain plus no reservations or one reservation. It'll be a very, very quiet day. That's okay. We've also got packing. You know, we've been buying tons and tons of prints at the auction sales and sites and the dealer auctions. We've been buying tons of prints getting ready for uh, the spring. So the girls have got lots of packing work to do today. We can't make them fast enough, but we can buy them. So. Any other type of knife for carving? No, not really. I never thought about it. And I'll, I'm not really into this for uh, for experimentation and, and whatever. I'm into this to try and replicate the look and feel and taste of traditional Japanese prints because they're so cool. So there isn't a whole lot of experimentation that goes on here. This tool, which I have very, very far from sort of having mastered or got comfortable with, this tool really does seem to do this job wonderfully well. It replicates the, the, the shapes that we need. So no, I hadn't thought at all about trying other kinds of knives. No. That's not to suggest nobody else should. I mean, whatever, of course. You know, anybody who doesn't have the official knife, use whatever you've got. In the beginning, I did the same thing. I used an exacto knife, I think was the brand name, just a knife that we had in the house, a utility knife. 
the first couple of prints I made were carved with that. So, so no, I haven't any experience since those days. I've got no other experience. I'm very, very happy with this tool. And there's a lot still to learn from me on how to use it. Absolutely. It's also a pleasure to use, you know, I wouldn't want to really muck around and try different things too much because this is such pleasure, it's such a cool tool. And when you get it right and everything looks okay and the blade is sharp and the lines are waiting to be cut, this isn't work, this is fun, it's just, you know, it's maybe like you could imagine a musician, you were talking about saxophones earlier, you could imagine a musician with a nice saxophone. Your saxophone, a beautifully well-made professional sax, is a, a pleasure to use and to handle and fondle and make noise with, you know. So messing around with it too much. A bit of confusion here. This is oh, these are lines. Yeah, some of these darker black lines are branches. This will come out, come out, come out. So again, don't panic when you see me cutting away a line here. There's both blossoms and branches mixed together here on this sheet. So. Okay, now here, around this, these are blossoms around the outside. These three lines, one, two, three, they're branches. They won't appear here.
tiny stuff is going to be invisible in the print. What's Jeff done here? It's a little ring shape he's designed. What's this? this ring oh, I can't see it nowhere well where are we we're up there oh it is there's a little tiny ring you can see it if you look at the shrine roof to the left of the shrine roof is a white area and just to the left of that white area there's a little red ring we're doing the red wiggly wiggly lines here don't know why he drew that but there it is let's carve it well, the color blocks have overlapping colors. Yes, there's totally overlapping. I know. You'll see it later. I know. The first color block is the entire face of the print except for the bright tiny street light up at the top and the white paper of the hanging in front of the shrine. So there's one base tone which covers the entire print. And that's the area you can see it. The, the cone of light shining down from the light, that's the base tone. It's under the entire print. Then they layer over on top of that. Layer two goes on top of it. It's the next level of pink, the first level of light pink. And that's under the entire print except everything else. This almost works like one of those reduction prints. You know, the Westerners sometimes make reduction prints. You could carve the whole block flat, print it in a light pink, chop out this, chop out that, chop out that, print a darker one. This is built the same way as that, actually. We could have done this as a reduction print. So some parts of this, the darker parts behind the people who are walking at the left and the very bottom end of the ground, they're going to be printed like six times. Color over, 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 over. So it's A, A plus B, A plus B plus C, A plus B plus C plus D. You'll see when we get there. The one I'm doing right now is part way through the process. This is not the lightest one. This is level one, two. This is level three. Three up. No, three or four. One, two, three. This is level four. Four up from the bottom. The color you're seeing me carve here, it's, well, it's everything. It's layered up, layered up, layered up. Well, the boundaries aren't actually specifically fuzzy. You know, they're, all, they're all cut quite sharply. And what we have to decide, what I have to decide what to do when we start printing is Jed in his Photoshop mock-up, which is what you're seeing there, has just clicked flat colors. He's done the, the overlap thing, they're all transparent, but he's made them, just because it's naturally, that's the way it comes out, he's made them flat. Any given color zone is an even smooth tone across the whole color. Now that's fine, we can print that way, that's what ukiyo-e printing is all about, smooth, flat color across the area. But there's also another way to do this, and that's by introducing some modeled texture into these things. So my guess is what we're going to try is level one, the one below the cone, the cone of light, smooth color, next level up, lightest model color, and maybe the purple that you see, the whole batch of, of cherry flowers, the, the light purple, which is level one, two, three, whichever, however you name them. We might do that with gomazui, speckled printing. So instead of a flat color, it'll be a blah, 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 color. And Jed can't easily do that in Photoshop. He could replicate it, but I'd rather have him leave that stuff out and we'll do it with our brushes as we get going. So, so we'll try that. We'll see. When I've got some proofing, we'll go back and forth with Jed. We'll send him some proofs. Maybe we'll be ending up doing smooth color, or maybe we'll do it more like a Yoshida print with a much more I don't know, textured color. We'll see. itself up here. So 
So we'll see how much we want the Yoshida eyes in this print. I don't know. We'll see. Look who's here, look who's here. Is it that time already? <coughs> what time is it? 8.39, my God, that's right, that's right, that's right. How you doing, sir? Uh, all right. Is it still raining out there? Huh? Still raining? Yeah. Raining. It's still oh, yeah, raining. it's raining, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Dragon raining. Ball, what page number finger in page 39? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Book 23 now. Page 150. We're pressing along. You know, you saw me do those color separations yesterday. Mm -hmm. when, just before you left, 5 o'clock or so. Yeah. Uh, the, this is the, the first one. I've chosen... I didn't have any choice, actually. You have to do the one with the wiggly lines on it, uh, because the next ones are bounded by those wiggly lines. Uh -huh. okay, that suits me, because this is the one that's going to take the most time. Got so it. I want the most time-consuming ones done first, mm -hmm. out of the way, so that I can, you know, don't have to face, oh my God, when am I going to get to that block? Yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 so. It's coming well. Yeah, it's coming up. This, the printers are going to cry when they see this. Oh, no. Because same thing. All year long, we get the same problem: flat color and tiny lines on one block. Mm. It's what we're trying to. We have to. We have to make the block count low. Yeah. You know, in an ideal situation, the flat color would be on one block, the tiny lines on another block. Yeah. But we can't do that. Mm -hmm. We'd have sixteen blocks for these little prints. <laughs> Forty-five bucks. They'd be four hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. Can't do it. So Suga says it's going to go, oh, not again. No. And I told her, it's all year long. Don't give me the not again. <laughs> because it would be again and again. So we started rolling around. There's almost no conversation. Sure. Everyone's still, quiet today. Yeah, everyone's quiet. We haven't even got like two full columns of this thing. So <laughs> Boxwood for the colors. No, 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 no. Couldn't do it. You can't do it. Boxwood is way too hard. You can't print on a color from boxwood absolutely yeah. let's try this we're going to turn the camera we're going to turn the computer around and it may crash yeah. my, my internet connection we'll see <clears throat> jed henry did i do something hard on the design <laughs> jed's asking let me try and turn this around jed good morning sir uh, 